Let's see if we are. Yeah. So that makes 62. 62. Now let me tell you what is at the bottom. The I Ching, which is one of my most favorite books in the world. It's an ancient um, Chinese book of change. But anyway, no 62. No 62. So anyway, that'll be another show too. But this is an 8. An 8. So here, when you're trying to improve yourself in any sense of the word, here's what you're really emphasizing. Sex, death, money. It's a psychological journey, that master journey is. And when you get on, when you board this train, um, it's going to carry you to the depths of everything that you couldn't even imagine where these particular subjects are concerned. Paul, are you saying that there's no such thing as improving yourself? What about combing your hair? Do you comb your hair because you enjoy combing your hair? Do you wash your hair because you love the way that it smells? Or are you combing your hair and washing your hair because you're hoping that somebody somewhere will notice it and comment to you and tell you how much they like it? These are all the things, meaning that if you're attached to someone's response to something you're doing, you're going to be disappointed. Okay. Now, let's see where we're going to go from here. Let's see. We're going to... Well, we'll pull another paper out of here. These, everything is connected together. Let's see how it is, okay? Let's see. Now, you know when I started the show, in each show I tell you that everything is haphazardous and spontaneous and nothing is planned. So you saw me pull out of paper out of that little box and I just pulled a paper out of one of these, this one I guess. All right, and this has to do um, with one of the uh, art renditions that I did and it's on the website. And it has this little um, reading, if you will. If you go and you pick one of the, the um, uh, pictures and then you'll get a, a reading that will tell you subconsciously why you picked it. See, that's the thing. We think we know why we pick something, whether that's a guy or a food or a car, but it's never the reason. Desire is your name. Sexuality is your game. <laughs> I think on my last page, I just emphasized. Desire is your name. Sexuality is your game. And nobody plays it any better than you. You are a ray of moonbeams and a spray of rainbows or other, but not necessarily yourself. The reason being is you are looking outside of yourself. What happened to, is this it? Yeah. This goes along with that. You were born to do. Okay? Nobody can do you like you can do you. And we went through the BMW and the Fairlane to show how it is important to get in touch with the you who is to do. The you who is to do. Okay. Desire is your name. 
Sexuality is your game, and nobody plays it better than you. You are a ray of moonbeams and a spray of rainbows for others, but not necessarily yourself, because you look on the outside of yourself. When you give 100% out, you are left with 0% to operate on. Okay, that goes back to expectations. You know that encounter I was talking about? When you meet somebody and then your mind immediately goes to expecting something? Well, when you get in front of that person and you start overboarding it, overboarding it, you know what overboarding it is. You know, I don't have to tell you because nobody can do you like you can do you. But when you start overboarding it to another person, there's no difference than you whoring yourself. That's what you're doing. You're doing something for the other so the other will get back, do something back to you. Whether that is to call you, text you, um, see you, uh, smile at you, acknowledge you, whatever. So when you're doing that, to get that, then any sense of innocence in that union ha has gone. It is a game of manipulation. And you're doing it. You're e executive. You are the executor, executive of it. So, let's say that you have met this person. Um, I always think of the same people's names. Let me try to come up with somebody else. Marvin and... Um, Serena. Okay, there's two names right there. But when Marvin, if he does, he meets Serena. Boy, that that's a he is happy as can be. He is happy. This this girl is everything in five minutes or less, he knows this girl is everything he wants, could ever want, does want, and gonna do. So he immediately starts trying to impress her by doing and saying and being everything that he could possibly be to try to lure her in, woo her if he would. So he starts, whatever, sending her roses and taking, if she accepts his um, advances and goes to the movies or wherever they go, out to eat, go clubs, and he starts, and not only that, when he's there, he has to keep adding and adding and adding, being better and better and better and better and more and more and more because he doesn't want to lose what he thinks he has. So what he ends up doing is giving 100% of himself, trying to attract. He probably buys a different kind of um, sh lotion, you know, and... Uh, Perfume, whatever it's called, so that yeah, you know, he thinks, well, she'll just love that. She could possibly hate it. But anyway, he does everything. So he keeps doing that and keeps doing that. He may or may not get a response from her of what he wants or thinks he should have. But the longer that he travels on that road around and around and around and around and around in his master musical pursuit of this Serena. He is giving out all he's got. He's giving it out. Now if he gives out 100%, what is he left with? He has nothing left to give. And so it might be on that particular day that she wants something from him or because he's been doing all this time, doing this and giving this and being this, what she expects him to continue in that manner. Well, on that day, he don't have anything to give. He don't have anything to give. That's the first time he's been real, though. So, there they are. Can't give more than 100%. When you give 100% out, you are left with 0% to operate on. You must learn how to gauge your activities and your time and your energy authentically. You spend way too much energy on things that are of no real interest to you. Learning how to say no honestly would be a great 
smile that would lift you from your present agendas. It would also keep you from being so deceptive as you use it as a means of self-preservation. Doing only those things that are natural and convenient apply here. So, if Marvin gauged his energy, because he can only do Marvin, if he gauged it with Serena, Serena, and on the first encounter when he met her, and of course he's overwhelmed and he's taken by all this physical attraction that's going on, he might dispose of 20%. That leaves him with 80% of Marvin. And Serena can take 20% without it knocking her off balance. We go back to fairness. We are constantly in a dance of energies. And if I try to give you too much, well, you can't take it. Nobody can take it. Can you eat too much? Can you drink too much? Can you run too much? I mean, after a while, you've got to stop. If you drink too much, you've got to throw up. If you eat too much, you you got to get it out somehow. So engaging your energy, not only are you retaining your innocence, but you are doing what is natural and convenient. Convenient. N-E-N-T. I-N. N-E-N-T. Anyway. Innocence. But you are doing what is convenient. Let me see how to spell that. C-O-N-V-E-N-I-N-T. Yeah. Any other thing that you're doing other than that, according to this show, that one's out too, Mitch. Is deceptive. And manipulating. Now, I'd like to know how you fit that idea into yourself about you being such a good and wonderful, loving, decent, desirable, attractive woman to that other person when your only motives are these. That's all. You're deceiving the other person because you are not being real. You are absolutely trying to give 100% of yourself to the other person. He already has 100 or she already has 100% and doesn't need your 100% and can't take your 100%. It, um, you know, it's like the seesaw. All right? There you go. There's the 100, I mean the 0% and there's the 100%. So it's off balance. And it cannot remain that so. So people ask, why do relationships end? Why do they end? Because you started on this journey of do. And before you even got here, because you've got a long ways to go on a journey. A long ways. And you've got 100% energy here. Okay, so if by this point, six months into the relationship, if it lasts that long, and you're completely out, you don't have anything else, where are you going to draw from? This was you. Who are you now? Who are you now? 
You have given that percentage to that, who was the person, Marvin? Well, Marvin now has 200%. Well, he ain't going to take 200%, but he's got his 100% and your 100%, and he's heavy. And you make him feel heavy. Every time he, you get around him, he wants you to go away from him because he feels heavy. He doesn't want to carry you, and he doesn't need to multiply himself. Goes back to... You may be driving the BMW, and he may be driving the Fairlane, but this is 100%, and this is 100%, and you cannot give this to that, and that can't give this to that. But both of you can travel down the highway together if you retain yourself. He, anytime you're trying to give somebody too much, they resent it bitterly. They resent it. Because who do you think you are that you're in a loftier position to give me something? You think I need something? Why? I am on this magical, musical master journey just like you. I'm traveling in a fair lane. You're traveling in the BMW. We're traveling down the same road. I got the music on, you got the music on. I'm eating a burger, drinking a Coke. You may be eating chips and drinking green tea. But we're still traveling the journey together. There's nothing that you can do to help me. I don't need any help. We are guided and directed 100% with everything that we need in this life to do what we need to do. Going back to that paper. All right. So, what do we want to do now? Let's see. I think this is the ones about the Bible. Now, I'll throw a little Bible in there, Mitzi. I think I will. See what we're going to pull up on here. <laughs>